Hello and welcome, my name is Xander. I will be your instructor through this tutorial. Now this tutorial is actually part of a whole course which you can access the first stages for free here on YouTube. Now in this tutorial, I might mention resources and other tutorials. Do check out the link in the video description which will take you to the playlist and also there will be a link to the resources so that you can access and follow along here on YouTube. Now, if you like this course, you found it useful and you want to take that next step, you can find this course over at Udemy. All the links to the resources can be found in the video description. Now, don't forget also subscribe to the channel for weekly promotions, discounts and free course giveaways. PG Admin is a popular open sourced graphical user interface tool for managing Postgres SQL databases. It is one of many that you might use. Like I said, this is probably one of the most popular open source, so free uh, tools to manage Postgres databases. So we're going to, in this tutorial, take a look at how to get it started and then connect to the database. And then we'll move to the next tutorial and start to see how we can use it to manage our tables. Right, so we have been running Postgres database in a Docker container. So there's no need for us to stop there. Let's now build a new container for pg admin so this is going to save us having to install and set up on our machine it's going to make it a lot easier for us to work with and pg admin is a web-based tool so in actual fact running it in a container is probably the best case scenario All right so in our docker compose file you may have already noticed that there might already be pg admin already defined as an additional service so we just need to make sure it's indented correctly so we use, there's a space between the postgres service it's now a new service i've called this pg admin uh, the image that we're going to take from docker hub the official image for pg admin the latest version and then we're going to provide a container name now in order to get the starter we're going to need to pass in two environment variables a default email and password you can see that this is not the most secure in the world but this is just going to be utilized while we are learning how to interact with the database you might like to change that if you move that into some sort of production environment of course so the ports well what we're going to do is we're going to map port 5050 from our local machine over to port 80 where pg admin will be running so let's make sure we have set that and then we have also defined the depends on so we're just saying here that this is just the order in which the containers should run we should always wait for postgres to start before we start running pg admin pg admin of course is dependent upon there being a database in the first place so we'll wait for it to start first and then we'll run pg admin container right so with that in place uh, let's go ahead and docker compose up now you may already have this running because i probably have left this in from the very beginning as a recording i've just added this so let's docker compose that pg admin depends on undefined service db okay so this needs to be the name of the of the service which is called postgres it's important so let's run that again so that should now download and create a new container actually what i would do is let's just make sure that we have removed any existing container right so i'm just going to tidy up first so i'll go ahead and delete that container if you have a container just go ahead and delete we'll start fresh again otherwise what we're going to have is artifacts from the tutorials that we've just moved through in this module uh, so the images can stay the same so we just removed the containers remember at the moment we are not persisting any data in our database so when we run a docker container a postgres docker container at this very moment anytime we stop remove the container and start it again all that data will be removed and that's really handy when we are learning because we can easily reset the database but of course you want to change that in production or when you actually start to save and use the database right so let's go back to the code so let's run our docker compose command again and everything should now be started so let's now open up a new browser window 
remember, like I mentioned, we are going to need port 5050. So local local host colon 5050. That should take us to PG admin. Now, what I haven't shown you yet is that we can actually persist data. So what's going to happen here is we're going to log in and we're going to set up a connection to the database and it won't be saved. So again, if we stop PG admin, restart it, all that data will be removed and we have to go through that process again, which can be a little bit annoying after a while. But for now, we won't set that up. We'll just go ahead and get this started. So this is just password. This is, this is what's specified in the Postgres in the Docker Compose file, sorry. So now we're logged in. First task is to add a new server. So let's give this a service name. Let's call this uh, Postgres DB. And we then need to go to connection. So the host name. So for the host name, what we can use is the name of the container, the database container, which is inventory underscore db and the reason why we can use that is because behind the scenes docker has a built-in dns service so we use a name but that will be turned into an ip address the ip address of this database container so let's add the host name as inventory db the username is postgres as per specification in the docker compose file and then the password should also be Postgres. I think that's the username and password. Uh, the maintenance database. Remember that's the Postgres database. That's the maintenance database. By specifying the maintenance database, that's what we're going to log into. That might not always be the case. You may prefer to log into the actual database that you want to work with. Um, but here we're going to specify the maintenance database as the Postgres database so that we can potentially then perform other operations on other databases. Because remember, sometimes when we connect to a database, we can't perform some operations on that database, like we can't delete it. Right, so let's press save. Looks like we are now connected straight away. So here on the left-hand side, let me zoom in a bit because there's quite a lot here. On the left-hand side here, this is where we can now access our database service resources. So we have our groups and our users. You can see Postgres is down here. It's one of our users. And then we have databases. So we're not going to be talking about table spaces uh, at this point, at least. So let's go into databases. So you can see that there's two databases. It looks like we are connected to the Postgres database because you can see it's highlighted. You can see the inventory has a cross there. So we're not connected to that database yet. So if I select it, it looks like we're now connected and we're told we're connected to that database uh, so we can start working with it. Okay, so let's take a look at the inventory database. Remember, we did start Docker again, the Docker container, so we don't actually have any tables. So let me just move this across here. So where you're going to find the tables is in the schema. And we'll talk about that in the next tutorial when we go ahead and create our tables. But that's where you're going to find tables in here. Other than that, um, you can see a load of other options, which we don't necessarily need to know anything about at this point. Uh, so that's how we're going to access our data. OK, use it through the schema here. OK, so that's our database in the middle here in the dashboard. You can see uh, we have performance metrics related to the database uh, server. From here, we can view different configurations and information related to the database management system. OK, so obviously our goal is to explore how to use SQL here to extract different information that might be useful. So if I right click on any of my databases, I've got a few options here, and this is probably more focused on what we need to concentrate on. And here, if I right click, I can then, for example, open up the query tool. And then from here, I can run queries. So select all from, well, I don't actually have any tables, so I can't really do that. But here, this is where I can start to write queries. So in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and create some tables within our database using the code that we created previously in this module. And then we can take a look at exploring the tables with this tool.
if you did make a mistake with the details regarding login in, what you can do is just right click and go to properties. From there, you'll be able to reconfigure. Else, you can just go ahead and remove the server and then start again. So there we have the introduction to PG Admin and how to connect to our database. PG Admin is a powerful and widely used tool that makes it easier for developers and administrators to manage Postgres SQL databases, execute SQL queries, which we will learn in the next tutorial, and perform a variety of database operations with a generally user-friendly graphical user interface.